Hey guys, you ever have one of those products that's just always sticking around? You know, you bought it a few years ago, you're still selling it today, and it just seems like the inventory never goes down. Well, those are zombie products, and today I'm going to tell you how to get rid of those. <laughs> So guys, this year for Halloween, we're going to be talking about zombie products. And zombie products are these products that, you know, we all have them. There's, there's something that, you know, we bought it, we thought it was a good investment, and we find out it's pretty hard to sell this thing and we get stuck with it for a while. You know, every time you turn your head, you're like, man, my stock hasn't gone down, I still got a ton of these, and I don't know how I'm going to get rid of them. So today, my goal is to give you guys some tips and some tricks, so that way we can you know, make some of these zombie products go away. You know, remove some of these problem items from your catalog so that way we can move on with our better, more profitable items. So my first tip with zombie items is to go back to your initial description and review it. Make sure that it's full of information. And not only is it full of information, but it's accurate information. Sometimes you can be overselling a product. Sometimes you can be underselling a product. You want to be sure that you are selling that product and you're making sure you're representing it in the best possible, most accurate way. Another thing to make sure is that you have good pictures. If your pictures are a little dark, if they're not clear of the features and things like that, people may not buy this product. And that might be the reason why it's still sticking around after all this time. So you want to make sure that, you know, you go back, you check on these things, you make sure they're good. Even if they are good, it might be worthwhile updating them. Try some different language. Try saying things a different way. And, you know, maybe freshen things up a bit. You know, maybe things are starting to get a little bit stale. Maybe there's some decay in that listing you need to clean out. So, my first tip is to go back to that listing and review it. My second tip is to think about kidding and bundling. So, you know, you might have a, a product that by itself, it's just not very good. I mean, alone, it's not really doing much. The margins are tight. It's not selling well. But when I take this item, I can put it with other items that are either similar or complementary, and we can create a kit or a bundle, a grouping of items that, you know, sells better than that one item alone. So, for example, something I've done this with is with kitchen tools. So, you know, you might try to sell a spatula on Amazon for 10 bucks, and nobody's buying that spatula. It's just a run-of-the-mill stainless steel spatula. Everybody's got one. Everybody's trying to get 10 bucks for it. But when you take that spatula and you put it with a barbecue fork, a knife, some other things, you, all of a sudden you have a barbecue set, and that barbecue set might sell a lot better than that spatula ever did. And this will allow you to clear out that inventory of spatulas because you partnered it, you paired it up with like items to create a kit or a bundle that sells significantly better than it did on its own. My third tip, I want to pose a question to you. How much would you pay for a pack of dental floss? Right here I have a, a pack of dental floss and I tried selling this exact pack of dental floss on Amazon. And guess what? Nobody wants $5 dental floss. Something you can do along the similar lines as kidding is increasing quantity. So for example, I used to sell this dental floss for $5, and when I sold this dental floss, because of shipping and Amazon fees, I'd be lucky to walk away with 60 cents. But I can do something really interesting. That is, I can combine this with other dental floss, like this, to make a four pack. So now I have four pieces of dental floss, and how much would you pay for this? I sell this for $10, and this sells significantly better than the one piece you sell for $5. Just by taking one low-value item and adding multiples of it, I was able to create a much more viable product and something that sells at a much higher rate. So if you have an item that's not doing well, probably because it's not a good value, and it's something that somebody might consume more than one of, I recommend you know trying to up the quantity Instead of trying to sell a 12-pack of spoons, sell a 24-pack of spoons. Instead of trying to sell 100 disposable plates, sell 500 disposable plates. Create value for yourself and the customer because you'll make more money. Like I make 
two, three bucks on this bundle instead of 50 cents, and the customer gets a better value because they're paying half as much per unit. So everybody wins when you, you know, put things in bulk. So I recommend trying to sell some of your harder to sell items in bulk. Fourth tip is to try another marketplace. You know, the buyers on Amazon are different than the buyers on eBay or different than the buyers on Etsy or different than the buyers on Wayfair. You know, there's tons of different outlets for you to sell something on. And just because it doesn't sell well on one marketplace doesn't mean it's not going to sell well on the other marketplace. For example, I have an iron here that was top five on Amazon, but when we put it on Walmart, it didn't do anything. We even tried running a Shopify store. It didn't sell, but it sells like water on Amazon. On another hand, we have some chair pads and they sell wonderful on Walmart but not so good on Amazon. So, you know, depending on the item, some sell better in different marketplaces. So it's important, you know, to try each one of these items out in all different kinds of marketplaces because you might be surprised where it sells well and where it doesn't sell well. And that's why I think it's important to become a multi-channel seller. But like I said, try listing your products on other marketplaces and maybe you'll find they sell better to a different audience. My next tip, is to give away a free product. Right here I got a toilet brush and this toilet brush doesn't sell. You can't give it away. Nobody wants this toilet brush. You put it on Amazon, you can't get 10 bucks for it. You know, you can't get eight bucks for it. Nobody wants it. But what I started to do was give this away as a free gift with other items that I had in my catalog. So for example, we also sold toilet seats. Now, this toilet seat was a good seller, but it, you know, struggled to compete with some of the brand name toilet seats, you know, like American Standard and Kohler and all those other brands. But if I price this toilet seat at the same price as a Kohler toilet seat, and I say, you get a free gift, all of a sudden this toilet seat starts to sell faster and better because it creates more value. It's all about value. My customer would rather get my seat with a free toilet brush than a competitor's seat without a free toilet brush. So what I was able to do was include this zombie product, a product that's not selling well, it's not generating any revenue, it's just sitting around. And I turned it into a value add for another product I had and made that product sell at four times the rate by just including this for free. So guys, I hope you learned something today. We talked about five tips you can use to help you sell your zombie products better. You know, these things have been hanging around. They've been following us around for years. It's about time that we do something about them. So guys, right now I'd like you to do something for me. If you could hit that like button if you could give us a share. We really appreciate it. We just broke the 500 mark last week. And, you know, we want to keep that momentum going right it through to 1,000. Thank you guys so much for watching. Come back next week.